Hi, I'm Lee Von Der. I'm the owner of Fungi Farm. We have a mushroom company in the Eureka, California. So here at Fungi Farm, our first goal was building a sterile laboratory where we have good filtration, clean air, um, and also a, a, a sterile lab area that we could culture out these cultures and keep them alive. And then our next, our next big move was uh, building out our fruiting room and our incubation facility and our workshop where we can manufacture products for microremediation and we could grow and produce fresh um, uh, and dried mushrooms for for sale. If we built the lab, if we were able to produce clean cultures, we could go in so many different directions and see um, what the community needed at any given time. So I became very fascinated in the late 90s learning about these uh, fungal allies and their role in nature and how their ability to break down contaminants, uh, digest and, and molecularly disassemble uh, chemical compounds, um, filter out harmful bacterias, and their role they play in the natural world, but also ways that we can uh, expand that and, and use that, that, those methods that nature has. Specifically with microfiltration, uh, these hyphae mycelial webs that the, that the fungi create in the soil and in mulch can actually trap and break down and digest harmful bacteria. And so microfiltration specifically is happening in nature already. So a lot of studies been going into of how we can take that, that nature's technology and apply it to these polluted waterways in these situations. A, a student named Riley approached me about doing some uh, fungal uh, experiments and we discussed uh, microfiltration as one of them and a, a great need that we could use here in, in Humboldt County. And we are setting up some experiments of doing some filtration through some inoculated buckets. So we put the mycelium into the wood chips in these buckets, let it colonize, and then we're pouring the wastewater through the buckets, timing the water flow rates, and looking at how much bacteria is trapped by the mycelial mass. It's not just that the bacteria is trapped, it's, it's the fact that it's actually broken down by the mycelium itself also. Hugh Riley, who's doing some experiments and collecting data right now on how we could implement this in Humboldt County here and uh, approach some landowners and some, um, some agricultural uh, uh, farms that are having high discharge levels from manures and fertilizers and are, are polluting waterways. So one project we did in Humboldt County was a, a, diesel, a diesel fuel sp spill out in Orleans, California, and the uh, storage tank had leaked multiple times and a generator had been leaking and an unknown amount of fuel had soaked into this um, uh, very sandy loam soil right next to the Klamath River. This site uh, was uh, Karuk tribal land. Um, uh, we had archaeological monitors because of that. It was the community center for the Mid Klamath Watershed Council. Uh, their offices also in the community center and the post office was right there and the fire department. So it was a, 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 a real community hub. So in this instance, the soil was dug out and removed, which gives us the ability to layer mycelium into that soil. This took uh, two treatments. Um, and over the course of about a year and a half, and this was monitored by a local engineering firm. Uh, the grant, they had a grant through the county, and we had the tribal monitor to, to observe any artifacts that were taken out. Because of the significance, the archeological significance of the site, hauling the soil away would have involved them sifting through the soil and identifying any archeological items. So it was a, a neat merge of cultural sensitivity and environmental issues, you know, environmental awareness of, of, of microremediation being one of the best viable options for this situation. We're bringing life into the soil. So we're starting that cascading uh, cycle of breaking down the pollutants, bringing in, then bacterias can multiply, then 
bugs and organisms and worms can come in, then plants can come in. There's been some great research of different companies looking at replacing styrofoam and packaging and insulative foam with mycelium. So we can take a variety of substrates and inoculate them with the mycelium and it will literally bind it together in whatever shape or form that you have that model around. This for instance is a, a copy of a, a company that grows wine bottle shipping forms. Uh, totally biodegradable, it's just mycelium and hemp. Uh, it doesn't have the same water repellent qualities as styrofoam. Um, uh, it will eventually rot, but that's also a big plus because styrofoam lives for hundreds and hundreds of years in the environment. Me and a local contractor are looking at different ways of building uh, insulative panels and insulative uh, wallboard that could be used for manufacturing that have a much, much lower carbon uh, footprint.